is what you're going to watch out for. These things. See that? That's where the fun is. Hypodermic needles inject you full of nasty stuff. So we're about looking around and we got ourselves a rattler. Definitely. Welcome to Texas. Welcome to Texas. Man, does that blend in with, you can't even see it, dude. That's what the rattle's all about, is telling you that he's there. And <laughs> you come and collect some firewood back here in this bramble. And uh, that's how it happens. Wild, man. Look at that thing. So what, are we going to eat that? Definitely. Oh, that's on the menu? One long backstrap. Yeah. Rattlesnakes, regular trail food, man. That was that kept me going for a long time. It's good. Good meat. And we all ready to go. We've really pissed him off way too much if he comes after me. But That's wild, man. Beautiful, isn't he? That is it's what it's like to be a couple feet away from a hospital visit. So what happens if you get bit? Uh, there's anti? very few things. You anti got anti-venom? Venom? Yeah, they'll pump you full of that. A polyvenom is what they use these days. What does that feel like? Uh, it is. It's, it feels expensive is what it is. <laughs> they can do very little for you. The proteins start messing with your body. You feel, you feel sick. Your, your, your skin, your, your muscles start to deteriorate actively. The snakes I don't understand. I just don't. The big thing with a snake is to give it a target. It's not you. Okay? Put any venom in there? So the deal is, is that we're not actually part of what they want to eat. We're human. We're bipeds. We don't smell like something they want to eat. And so a lot of times when these guys will bite, unless you're just messing with them like we're about to, it's going to be a dry bite. Uh, we're talking like two out of ten times you'll actually get venom in you. If it was a dog, it'd be nine out of 10 times. That dog's probably gonna die, or he's gonna, he's gonna be really messed up. As long as you can remove that head, get the nasty, pokey, venomous parts away that are gonna mess you up, free meal. Is that the best way to just cut the, we just cut the head off now? That's yeah, it. we just yeah. take the head off, we're safe. This is what you're gonna watch out for, these things. See that? where the fun is. Hypodermic needles inject you full of nasty stuff. It's gonna put the snake out of its misery. It's gonna be not feeling anything, all right? Still be moving though. It'll yeah. still be moving. Right Good? there, yep. Make sure you get the neck. <laughs> the neck of the snake. All right, so this is the important part. That snake is still gonna be able to function right there for an hour or so. And so I'm not gonna throw that away. Per se, we wanna dig a hole. A lot of times I throw it in the fire. Especially if you've got pets around or kids around, this snake can still bite you. When in Texas, Make, yeah. learn by doing. Oh, Jesus, moving. I, think I didn't let go that time. It is moving though. Making progress. <laughs> Making progress. This is day one. There will be snakes. Okay, so am I just gonna go straight up like I normally would? Straight up the belly? Yeah. Sometimes, uh, depending on... Am I, just, am I just opening the skin? Like, there's not gonna be any muscle in there. No, it's open, just like the rib cage. If you were gutting something, it's just gonna be a bit of skin uh, and connective tissue. You're yeah. not gonna be going through any bones. The hardest part is getting that first bit of neck going, the first inch or two, because right. it's really tight onto the bone. After that... Do I gotta worry about goes. going into the guts? Like, will it spoil the meat at all? It shouldn't, but we, we wanna clean it up anyway. Just want to guide up and through. Sometimes people will just get it started and then oh, invert the entire move. skin. <laughs> Fire's getting hot. It is gonna get hot. Put my 
All right. Nice. So you get go. the idea. That's the basic idea. All we're doing is going straight up. Uh, I see how this works. All I'm doing is going through the, the rib cage, mm -hmm. left and right. That makes sense. Right in between. You go ahead and uh, you're going to go inside the rib cage. Okay. And this little strip, that is the organs, and they've just been extended out lengthwise. So get up through there, grab them all, and then they'll just pull out all in one big package. Okay. I gotta say, this is not a big piece of meat. <laughs> no. It's all right. Like, you want to slice that off? Sure. I'll get. I'll pass you the knife because I'll hold it and I'll keep it out of the dirt here. You're good. You got You're it. Good. Yeah, I got it. Now you can see this snake <laughs> is still moving. There you go. There we go. It's a. It's a white meat, eh? Like look at that. Real white. Yep. So this doesn't bother me. This doesn't feel like a snake anymore. It's still just but moving. But it's still moving, man. No guts. No, no guts, skin, no head, no, no head, no way to feel pain, nothing. And that's just minutes from being a meal. All right, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Throw it on the grill. Yep. Spit it up. Nice little snake kebab. Check that out. That is awesome. Look right there. Boom. Sweet. Now these things are amazing. So most people know these tunas down here, these fruits, because you can get them at the grocery store. They're bright red, real pretty, very, very sweet. But right before they turn red... You can get these at the grocery store? Yeah, here in eat? Texas, yeah, yeah all yeah, over. Like, neat. I mean, people actually have these things for sale, the whole cactus. You go to the grocery store, produce aisle, right next to the to, potatoes. To eat? Right next to the potatoes, so you'll this find is, this. This is grocery food. This is grocery food. All right, man. So we're gonna people, collect a whole pile of it. People pay for this stuff, <laughs> but this stuff mostly people don't understand the fruits right here before they become real red and what people would say is ripe. They're they're like the mashed potato of Texas. Okay. So we're gonna spit a bunch of them. Well, we can't pick these up by hand. No, no. You'll what hate about yourself. with gloves? No, it'll destroy your gloves. <laughs> so the Glockids, tiny little microscopic, just about thorns, all through your hands. You put your gloves on there. You touch the gloves. It goes through the gloves. This is some meat and stuff. So we got sticks so then. We have sticks. I'm gonna put them on spits. Then we're gonna burn the hate off these things. That sounds so good, man. A little bit of flame takes the thorns off. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. So yeah, we're gonna collect a whole pile of them. We think a hundred, hundred. <laughs> we're gonna skewer them all on. It's gonna be a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. And if you're worried about plants, man, this is this is one of hundreds of stands that we have here. Like. We're not, we're not taking down the population at all. No, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. this. This sounds good, actually. Bump my hand back in there. Gotta learn by trial and error, so. Just pull out. Oh, it broke off. Oh, it broke off again. Them. You gotta get them way down here. <laughs> like, way down. And they don't feel good. <laughs> and you gotta pull quickly, because if you'd go oh, slowly, <laughs> They break off faster. Did that one stay in there? Did they come out? It came out. The short one. You've got one little bitty one that you had broken off that's down in there. Can but you do that with your nails? Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Cut it. That took us about half an hour. That's a pretty good return on your investment, man. That's like, that's substantial. It's probably a lot of water weight, but carb, carbs too, sugar. Uh, I'd say that probably weighs four or five pounds and uh, if they taste as good as they say they do <laughs> it'll be pretty full man that's a lot of food Texas style yeah man so what are you doing putting the flame on the burning off we call it purple or the hard way red or what this is the tuna we're burning off the glockid the nasty stuff off of the fruit is look any more? Yeah, and this is the hard way. You take off both ends, right? Just a little bit, and all that good stuff, all that pink, purple, 
That's all sugar. So you don't eat the eat the seed part. Do you, do you don't eat the rind part. Uh, not not the skin on the outside, but you can take all the flesh up against that skin and just scrape it off. The seeds. A lot of folks say they eat the seeds, but if you just eat a handful of these, yeah, you can eat the seeds. But after a while, you're gonna back yourself up because you're not designed to digest them. So don't swallow too many of the seeds. We just tuck on the seeds, I guess, and spit spit whatever's left out. As Bob's saying, he's not supposed to eat the seeds. It's pretty good. Not super sweet, but. So the green ones that we collected, do we have to spit the seeds out or it's all ready to go? The seeds are like an okra seed. You just eat straight through them. They're nice, soft, taste amazing. It's all good. All right, let's go do that. So what's the Coles Notes version on this uh, prickly plant? Yeah, pretty hateful looking, huh? <laughs> That's uh, yucca. It's all over the southwest. That leaves right there, it's called Spanish Dagger. Put some holes in you. You can make rope out of those. Roots make soap. Blossoms are edible, but we're about a month late for the blossoms. Make the pods. Here in about two weeks, those pods are going to be full of sugar. So it's just wrong time, right place kind of thing. So inside the pod? Yeah, you can bake it. It kind of tastes like okra after a few hours. But it's no good now. Right now, it tastes like chemicals. You really got to cook it down. Yeah, it smells like an uh, unripe green plant. It starts tasting real good, and then the, the aftertaste just floors you. So is it the, the seed and the... In the, in the flesh on the inside that you can the eat? The seed dries out and that becomes a grindable flour, kind of like a barley. So that's preservable all through the year. And then the inside becomes kind of like a mushy, like overripe banana. It smells like maple syrup, real strong. Yeah. They used to ferment it. And so this isn't the same as a, what's I'm not gonna say it yuka, right? Yucca, 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 cassava. Yeah, yucca cassava. cassava. Yeah, yeah, that's the root, that you can eat the root. Oh yeah. But and you can't eat the root on this one. No. This is soap, you said. This, this would be soap, this would be horrible, yeah. You're making a mistake. You can see there's, you know, that'd be a nice meal if you could eat it. We're uh, too soon. <laughs> Come back in a couple weeks. But that would be in abundance because there's a huge, huge, huge plant back there. So you can see all the seeds in there and the flesh would be edible, but not today. First name, man. How you feeling about it? Uh, I don't mind eating, I'll eat anything. <laughs> you can't really taste that reptile past the uh, dobo sauce. You don't know me. So you're just gonna, there you go, yeah. strip it down. Well, with the adobo, or wood adobo, we gotta be specific. Here. It's my own brand. Is it? Um, it tastes like meat with adobo spice on it. Yeah, it's homemade spice. I mean, homemade spice mix. It's all good, man. I don't mind snake. I wish it was bigger, though, to be honest. Now that's the finished snake. I'm just pulling pieces of the backbone off, but. Not, not a ton of meat on there, but it's better than nothing. You're not gonna get fat off rattlesnake. No, <laughs> we're not gonna make our calories back off rattlesnake. Might be right, right there. Beautiful. That fire is insanely hot, man. That w that wood is dry, bone dry. Like I can feel the heat out four feet, and we've only just started it. It's insane. All right, so after much delay, as always, nothing comes ready-made. Certainly not anything worth eating. So I was told these were gonna taste like mashed potatoes. Let's try this cooked one. It's got some mucilaginous stuff on the outside. So it's still some spikes in it, which is always fun. What do you call the spikes? Glockids. Glockids. He's gonna cut his open. It's the first time I'm trying this. There's a big turkey vulture right there in the tree. You see it? Right there? Turkey vulture, it looks like. Glockids are spikes. And they hurt, so you don't want to eat those, obviously. And then uh, leaving on the fire bakes it a little bit. And I promise these taste like m mashed potatoes. So let's give it a go. You don't eat it it's whole. We do is uh, break it open. Got a one of those spikes in my finger. Yep, there we go. Okay, so we break it open.
it's all right it's like slimy slimy green bean mashed potato slimy green bean mashed potato <laughs> it's good I'm having a hard time dealing with the outside and inside well I feel like if I do that I'm gonna get all those spikes in my oh, you will. You will. <laughs> they're all in my finger already yeah. anyway. there's probably somebody who's better at teaching this than I am but hey you get a first-hand impression of it well, there you go all right, I'm gonna eat a few hundred of those. So, what are you gonna do? Keep it? You're gonna roll it up? That's that's hmm. awesome. I'm gonna roll it up, and preserve it. Yeah. Send it back to Canada, man. I don't know if I can take it like that. I'd have to dry it out, I think. Yeah, we'll preserve it for you. All right, awesome. So if y'all aren't sure, check out the channel. I'll show you exactly what chemicals you need. Have you got it on your channel? Have you got it on your channel? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, tanning rattlesnakes. You know, right, if you're going to eat it, might as well make the best out of the All skin. Right, I'm going to link that up then. Hoorah. We don't have time enough to show how to preserve it, but... None is wasted. It's worth, no it's worth, uh, it's worth knowing. Hey guys, I'm back in Canada, and I've been doing a pile of editing. I want to keep this video series rolling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release a video every Tuesday and every Friday. This is going to be going on for about two and a half months. I have 19 episodes in total. So what I'm going to ask you to do is support the channel. What I want you to do, if you can, is please watch the video entirely from the beginning right to the end. YouTube is tracking all sorts of uh, data in their algorithm and what they want to see is a high watch time or retention time So if you guys can do that and you like the series and you want me to continue doing that That's one small way you guys can help leave lots of comments down on the bottom Not just one but a bunch of them that helps of course hitting the like button is super easy You can do that too and sharing it if everybody shared it to five people it would get big really fast and Lastly if you want to support it monetarily you can buy a t-shirt I'm hoping to get some more t-shirts up if the t-shirts are available. I'll provide a link if not, you can always offer a PayPal donation that will come directly through me. To me, you can also hit the sponsorship button. It's a new uh, feature that YouTube has added. You click sponsor and it's a monthly uh, subscription. So they'll, I think it's $5.95 or something like that. And uh, ongoing supports the channel. So guys, I hope you enjoy the series. Um, if you guys want me to continue doing this, you want me to go to other different places, uh, let me know. If you have access to land, um, you know, private land, and there's a lot of hunting, fishing, opportunities, trapping, that sort of things, and you want to invite me up and a guest or a couple of, a couple guests, let me know. Shoot me an email for that. I do not always get to all the comments to do my best, but if it's, a, uh, if it's an important thing like, hey, you want to uh, hook me up with some land and you've got it ready to go, let me know. So uh, I'd like to explore and open different doors and avenues and see where this, uh, this YouTube thing and the survival wilderness living thing takes me. So I would, Definitely let, welcome some uh, some offers of getting into new lands all over the world. So let me know. Thanks for the experience. Oh, we need something to eat, man. Yeah, and, uh, we do. We gotta we gotta cook this guy up now. Yeah, let's do it. He's looking at me now. Fresh snake. All right, man. Let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Would be. <a> <laughs> no. That's pretty wild. It's a little you call it ribbon snake. Uh huh. Ribbon snake with a frog in his mouth. Yeah, that's nice. Look at that. He's not gonna give up on it, is he? No. Small, <laughs> small snake with a small frog. <laughs> Pretty cool. Good find. We're not gonna eat any of those, are we? <laughs> Too small. <laughs> big rod, eh? Hey. Hey. Big fish, get a big rod. <laughs>